Welcome to the No Zone. This is the place where we have a lot of fun as we learn. My name is Wanja. I'm Charlie. Where's Marara? 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 Marara. Oh, 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 here I am. I'm sorry, I was looking for my Cool Words exercise book. Oh, well done. I can see you're very serious about improving your English. Mm -hmm. Teacher Penda will be very pleased by your effort. And just like Marara, we hope that you will be watching out for Cool Words as well. Come on. Hello everybody, how are you today? Fine, thank you! We are glad to have you here for today's show. Why don't we start by saying a big hello to everyone who's watching us at home. Hello! Well, hello friends! Hello, Marara! Well, Marara, you're just in time for today's buzzwords. Oh, really? And what are they about? Well, today's buzzwords are all about industry. So, why don't you tell everyone at home what the buzzwords are? Exports. Process. Package. Recycle. Factory. Now these words are very important and we'll be asking you to listen out for them throughout today's show. But first, why don't we go and meet Nita, Bakari, James and the rest of the gang for another exciting adventure in Makutano on... Junction Juniors! Y. Wrong! Try again! I N D U S T R Y. Yay! Everyone, it is going to happen, and if it happens, I will never see them again. Bakari, what's wrong? Calm down. Tell us the problem. I have just been told that the special need art and craft project will be closing forever. What? Why? Because there's not enough money for a new teacher. Listen, if this project closes, some of my friends will be forced to drop out of school. This is the only way they feed their families. We have to do something fast. But what can we do? I'll have to find a solution for this. Uh, uh, Bakari, you can't live until we all find a solution. Yeah, after all, Junction Junior solved their problems together. <sighs> I just feel so helpless. Nisa, maybe Teacher Pando doesn't understand that there will be problems if the special needs project closes. What do you mean? What if we try telling her that some of the pupils will no longer come to school if the project was to be shut down? Yeah, I'm sure she won't want to see some of her pupils leave. I don't think that will work. Don't say that, Bakari. We have to at least try. Junction Juniors, what if some of us went to see Mr. Shaka, the bank manager, and ask him on how to keep the special needs school project running? Yeah, that will work. After all, he's a bank manager. He might even give us a loan. I agree. That's a good idea. I think we should split up into two groups and meet here in one hour and a half. One hour has 60 minutes, while half an hour has 30 minutes. So that means we'll come back here in 90 minutes. I think I have an 
idea which can make Mr. Shaka give us a loan. Teacher, Teacher Pendo. Pendo! What's going on? Teacher Pendo, you can't let this happen. Let what happen? Please don't let the Special Needs Art and Crafts Project close down. I've tried my best. I've even applied to the Community Development Fund. I promise you, if anything comes through, you'll be the first ones to know. What if nothing comes through? Then I'm sorry, we'll just have to shut it down. Teacher Pendo, is this something we can do to help? Like call our parents for a Rambe meeting? Or ask them to help. I'm sorry, I've really tried my best. Okay. Bakari, wait. Yes, how may I help you? My, my, my name is Mr. Barasa, and this my friend here is Mr. George. George. And I'm oh, Mr. Jules. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you all. My name is Mr. Shaka, and I'm the bank manager here. How can I assist you, <laughs> gentlemen? Look, I'm not promising you anything, but I'm sure we can work something out. Now, if you worked with your fellow students to create some curios, then we would set a date when we would bring the whole community together and they would come to buy your curios. That way, we'll be able to make some money and the project will be able to sustain itself. We'll do it, teacher. Good. But you only have one week to make the curios. We need a loan of about 20,000 Kenya shillings. All right. So are you members here at the bank? Uh, that Mm, that's what we've come here to discuss. We want to join your bank. Oh, you want to join the bank. Good. Now, do you have the membership fee with you? No. Yes. No, we don't. Yes, we do. 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 Let it now look. You read the whole plan and you're falling for it. James, this was a bad idea. He wasn't falling for it. Where oh. do you expect us to get the membership okay, fee? Okay, okay. Calm down, kids. What is it that you really want? I like the idea of making curios, but how do we get started? Yeah, we don't even have money to buy the materials. What about we use the money in the saving box? The money in the saving box is for the children in the IDP camps. We can't use that for another project. Hmm, I've got it. Uh, we went to Mr. Shaka and he gave us a great idea. What did he say? He said that during our spare time, we could collect old bottle tops, polythene bags, and recycle them. And then he said we can turn them into art and sell them to make money. Oh, that's a good idea. Ah, yeah. I've never thought of recycling before. And that's not all. He said the profit that we make from our sale, he'll use his own money to double the amount. Ah, that's very generous of him. Look, we need to get started now. Since Bakari, you're in the class of art and craft, you should teach us what to make. Yay! Yay! First things first, some of us need to look around for things we can recycle from twigs, plastics, bottle tops, and old cartons. Oh, so, can we recycle anything? Yes, that's the beauty of art, James. You can create it using anything. Now, the other group needs to make posters to advertise the curios you are making. And alert people on what day we are going to sell our art at school. Quick, let's get working. I know where to get materials. Who's coming with me? Let's go. We'll stay and make the design. All I need to do is run home and collect some glue and paper.
make this much money. I'm very proud of all of you. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. And Bokari, I have some good news for you. I just talked to the CDF committee and I think the special needs project will go on. Yay! Yay! Well, how much have you made? 3,500 shillings! Wow, you've taken to industry like a duck to water. Well, thanks to all your hard work, the community is more aware of the special needs class and I'm sure we will be getting more support from them. Speaking of support, here you go. As I had promised. Teacher Pando, we now have 7,000 shillings! Yay! And that's not all. I have contacts in Nairobi who have promised to buy your work. We can even start up a company and export them. Bran has really missed out. That's all right. I'm sure he's enjoying his shopping trip with his grandma. Wow, I'm really happy you are my friends. Jam Shan Juniors forever! Yay! Jam Shan Juniors! Aha! Uh -huh. I did not know that recycling old material could be that useful. Did you? No! It's true. At the end of the day, art is all about beauty. And you can make something beautiful from anything, whether it's brand new or if it's old. That's true. Now tell me, did you hear any of the buzzwords? Oche? I heard the word recycle. The Junction Juniors recycled old material to make amazing products. Uh -huh. Tell me, what else did you learn? Marara? Well, I learned that it's a good thing to work together to help others. That's true, Marara. What that sound means. It means it's time for Cool Wars! Hello everyone and welcome to Cool Words. Marara, what are you doing? This is my feather. I have been looking for it. I need it for today's lesson. Oh, I I'm sorry, Teacher Pendo. It's okay. Now, do you notice how light this feather is? I can make it move by just blowing it. Mm -hmm. When something is very light in weight, then we can compare it to a feather and say, as light as a feather. Oh, that is very interesting, Teacher Pendo. But I cannot imagine anything that could be as light as this feather. Let me give you another example. Look at my box. My box is as light as a feather. Now, I am comparing two things that are not alike in most ways, but are similar in one very important way. They are light. Comparisons like this are called similes. Let's say that together. Similes! But, Teacher Pendo, I cannot blow your box into the air like you did with a feather. That's right, Marara. Now, the box and the feather are not similar in most ways, but they are similar because they're both light in weight. That's why I use the simile to compare them. When I use the expression, as light as a feather, it makes my sentence sound more interesting, unlike when I just say, this box is light. The simile helps you understand that the box is really light in weight. Mm. I get it now. Does that mean that I can make my own similes to compare two different things? Yes, you can, Marara. Good similes compare two very different nouns. But there are other points you need to remember when using similes. One, similes are a way to describe something. Two, we use the words as or like to make the connection between the two nouns that are being compared. And lastly, they are used with adjectives or verbs. I'd like you to come up with some more similes. Try and explain why you think the simile is effective. Who would like to go first? Yes, Taria? The sound of machinery in the factory was as loud as thunder. That's a brilliant comparison. The noise of the machinery working can be compared to that of thunder, which can be very loud. Hmm. Now, Teacher Pendo, Brian was as brave as a lion when he faced the bullies Amos and Freddy. And as you know, Lions are very, very brave. <laughs> very good, Marara. Any other examples? Yes, Ocheng? The girl was walking as slow as a snail. We know that snails move slowly. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anyone else? Yes, Sibia? The ogre's breath smelled like rotten meat. <laughs> uh, Shapendo, I have a question. Mm -hmm. 
Do ogres brush their teeth? No. no. Oh, then they must have awful breath. Oh, I'm sure they do. Anyway, I'm sure you've noticed that when you use similes, it's more interesting to use similes that are fresh and original. That way, they make writing and reading very interesting. Now, shall we play a game? Yes! Good. Now, I am going to read out some sentences, and I'd like you to pick the missing word to complete the simile. So here is my first sentence. Our football field is as flat as a... Yes, Hamete? Pancake. Very good. Our football field is as flat as a pancake. To the next sentence. The grapes were as... as honey. Yes, Teddy? Sweet. Very good. The grapes were as sweet as honey. Now to the next sentence. The classroom was as quiet as a... Yes, a chair. Graveyard. Very good. The classroom was as quiet as a graveyard. And next, his movements were as... as lightning. Yes, Taria? Quick. Very good. His movements were as quick as lightning. And one more sentence. Juma was as busy as a helping dad in the garden. Yes, Nkerate? B. Very good. Juma was as busy as a bee helping dad in the garden. Well done, all of you. Well, I hope you joined in at home. Right now, though, Maspini is taking us all the way to a flower farm in Naivasha. So let's go out, out there. there. Wow, isn't Lake Naivasha beautiful? I've come to Naivasha to learn more about one of Kenya's most important industries, flower farms. Come with me and learn more about this industry. These big constructions are greenhouses. Greenhouses are very warm inside, which encourages the young flowers to grow. The first part of the flower growing process is planting the small flowers into the soil. The young flowers stay in the greenhouse until they are strong enough to grow outside. The flowers are then put into the soil. Each flower is treated with great care so that it can be exported to another country and sold. All flowers need a lot of water if they are to grow. Oh, hey! Shh. The workers ensure that there are no weeds in the soil. I am sure you know that flowers need a lot of light to grow. That is why the flower farm has put electric lights over the flowers so that they can grow even at night. Thanks to all the water and the light and the loving care, they have grown beautiful flowers. Now they are ready to be cut and transported to the factory where they will be inspected by the goods manager. It's very important for all the workers to follow strict safety measures, such as wearing protective clothing. Ouch! Some of the flowers, like these roses here, have sharp thorns. These pretty roses will make a wonderful gift for someone. When all of the flowers have been inspected and sorted, they are then taken to be packaged. The packaged flowers will then be taken to an airport, put onto the aeroplane, and exported to many different countries around the world. Hmm? 
Now we are done with the strapping. We are taking it to the cooling zone. So, now you know about Kenya's famous flower industry. Goodbye, everyone. See you next week. <laughs>
all of these words are about industry. Now, try and listen out for them, because they will be appearing throughout today's episode. Right now, though, it's time to join Ranger Rukia. Mara, what animal are we learning about today in the Wild Zone? Well, I'm glad you asked me, Wanja. Mm. We are going to visit some very interesting birds. Oh, mm -hmm. let's find out more. Hello, Nose on Rangers. I got here as fast as I could. Someone told me that they saw a huge cloud of smoke and it could be a forest fire. Can you see where the smoke is? Oh, there it is. But you know what, Nose on Rangers? That is not a cloud of smoke. Those are very many little birds known as quelea. Today, I will tell you all about them. Now that they've stopped flying, we can take a closer look at them. Quileas are very small birds. They are about 13 centimeters long and weigh about 15 grams. This is one tiny bird. Male quileas are more colorful than the females. This is because they want the females to think that they are handsome and to like them. Quileas sing beautiful songs. You can hear them clearly early in the morning when you wake up. They do not live alone or in small groups. They live in large groups called flocks. One flock of quelea has more than a million birds in it. Wow! Their wings flapping together sound like a strong wind blowing over the plains. Some flocks of quelea are so big that they take almost five hours to fly past. The force that the flock travels with can break branches and flatten plants. Flocks of quelea travel very long distances in search of food, water, and to find a place to lay their eggs. When they find a suitable place, the flock of quelea settles down. Once the nest is complete, the female lays two to four little eggs and sits on them for 12 days. After the chicks hatch, they are fed for some days with caterpillars and other insects. The young birds are strong enough to leave their nests in two weeks. The huge flock of quelea continue traveling. Each quelea lives its entire life for only two to three years. Quelea like eating seeds from wild grasses. However, they also enjoy eating seeds from people's farms like wheat, sorghum, and millet. One flock of quelea can destroy thousands of acres of crops in a single day, not leaving behind even a single grain. Because of this, farmers fear quelea's very much. Birds like the maribou stork and falcons hunt quelea's for food. However, this is often not enough to control their population. Farmers try everything they can to stop flocks of quelea from destroying their farms. Each year, nearly 200 million quelea's are killed by farmers using bombs and poison spray. Quelea's teach us an important lesson about population control and its devastating effects on the environment and our livelihood. Just like the quelea, any population, including ours, that becomes too large can destroy the very environment that sustains it. Think about it, Nose on Rangers. Until next time, bye! That's such a tiny bird. And it weighs, what, 15 grams? Not as much as... A, a small piece of cake. Trust my heart, think of food. I'm sure you all know what that sound means. It's time for... Hot Numbers! Hello everyone and welcome back to Hot Numbers. Now last lesson, we learned how to tell the time. This lesson, we are going to learn how to change minutes into hours and hours into minutes. Mm, now that sounds very interesting, Teacher Pendo. Thank you, Marara. Now last time we learned that when the hour hand, the short hand, moves from one number to the next, it represents one hour. What about the minute hand, the long hand? How do we know that it has moved one hour? Yes, Ocheng? When it starts from 12 and goes back to 12. That's correct. The minute hand makes a complete circuit in one hour. It has to move from 12 all the way back 
to 12. Now it's easy to work out how many minutes there are in an hour if you remember how many minutes each number represents. Now each number represents five minutes. Now, when we want to change hours into minutes, we multiply the number by 60. And when we want to change minutes into hours, we divide the number by 60. So, if it takes me one hour to get to work, how many minutes are those? Oh, 60, 60. Okay, well done, Marara. You're absolutely right. It's 60 minutes. Now, if you feel that the sum is too big, remember how I taught you how to multiply using two digits? Now, let's multiply using the column method. It takes Mama Kamau three hours to get to her village. How many minutes does the journey take? Now, who can remind us how many minutes there are in an hour? Yes, Marara? There are 60 minutes in an hour. Very good. So one hour equals 60 minutes. Now, how many hours does it take Mama Kamau to get to her village? Yes, Teddy? Three hours. Uh -huh. Very good. Three hours. So we multiply 60 by 3. So what is zero times three? Yes, Nkerota? Zero. Mm -hmm, very good. And what is six multiplied by three? Yes, Sibia? 18. Very good. So the answer to 60 multiplied by three is 180 minutes. That means Mama Kamau's three hour journey takes her 180 minutes. Mm -hmm, you're right, Mara. Now let's work out another sum. This time it will be slightly different. How many minutes are there in two hours, 20 minutes? Yes, Gaddafi? 140 minutes. Hey, wait a minute. How did he do that? Well, let's work it out together. Now, we have two hours, so we write the sum like this. Now, what is zero multiplied by two? Yes, Marara? Zero. Very good. And what is six multiplied by two? Yes, Sede? Twelve, so we have 120. So the answer is 120 minutes. Now we add this 20 to the 120 minutes. And the answer is 140 minutes. Now let's convert minutes into hours. This time we are going to divide. So Marara slept for 240 minutes yesterday afternoon. Whoa, I slept for a long time. <laughs> now, this is how you will write this sum. 240 divided by 60. Now, how many times does 60 go into 240? Yes, Nkirote? Four times. Well done. So we will write our four here. Let's just complete the sum. So Marara slept for four hours. So 240 minutes equals four hours. Now, I am going to give you a slightly complicated sum. It takes me 183 minutes to clean my entire house. Now, how many hours is that? What do you think will happen when we divide this number by 60? Yes, Ocheng? 60 goes into 183, three times. Mm -hmm. And there will be three left over. Excellent, that's correct. So what do we do with the remainder? Yes, Marara? I'm not sure, Teacher Pendo, but should we leave it as minutes? Yes, we leave it as minutes. Now, we know that 60 goes into 183 three times. So that gives us 180. 
and then we minus 180 from 183, which leaves us with a remainder of three. three. Very good. So how many hours does it take for me to clean my entire house? Yesterday? It takes you three hours, three minutes to clean your house. Very good. It takes me three hours, three minutes to clean my entire house. Well done, all of you. Now, Marara, are you able to remind us how to convert minutes into hours and hours into minutes? Well, um, I'll try. Now, to change hours to minutes, we multiply the number of hours by 60. And to change minutes into hours, we divide the number of minutes by 60. Uh -huh. Well done. Well done, all of you. Well, that's all from today on Hot Numbers. Right now, though, let's join Auntie Sana, who's about to show us how to get creative in Art Zone. <laughs> Hello children, welcome to another episode of Art Zone. This is Auntie Sana and today we are making spiders. And it's actually very simple to make them. All you need is paper bags, you'll need a pair of scissors, and you will need some sellotape. First you take your paper bag and all you have to do is just crunch it up into a ball. So if you want a big spider, you make a big one. If you want a little spider, a little ball. And what you're going to do is you're just going to wrap this around the paper bag. So just wrap it around. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape. Just whatever shape is fine. Then you get your scissors. Remember, you always have to be careful with scissors. Okay? So that's the body of my spider. And then I'm going to take some more paper. This time, I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to roll it up so that I can use it for the legs, okay? So once it's rolled up like that, you take your cellar tip again. This is what we're going to use for the legs. So there you have it. So once you take this, you take your body, and if you want a spider with really long legs, you can do that, or if you want them to be shorter, you can just cut it. So I had made some legs before, so I'm just going to take these eight legs, and just stick them onto my spider. So you're going to use quite a bit of sellotape because this is what's going to hold the legs together. Okay, so you just keep adding on. So there, I have the body of the spider. You notice that there's no eyes on my spider? Well, I have masking tape, which I'm just going to take and roll it up into a ball to look like whatever kind of eyes you want. So that's going to be one eye. Just stick it on there using the separate tape. The second eye. I have a marker here, so I'm just going to mark in the eyeballs. And there, you have it. That's the spider. Well, what else do you want to make? You can make a ladybug, or you can make something that looks like an ant, or you can just stick to making more spiders. Well, I don't know what you're going to make, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thank you so much for joining us today on AdZoom, and see you next time. Goodbye. Wow! Auntie Sana is so creative. Those spiders looked real, didn't they? Yes! Yeah, perhaps you could go home and try and make one of them and see if you can scare any of your friends. Well, let's move on to something a little different. Something that will need you to put on your thinking cap. It's time for our spectacular spelling challenge. It's time for spell it. Animal, animal. chapter, building, building. narrow, building. respect, respect. deep, vegetable, work. 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 Hello, everybody. Welcome to spell it. Sibia, Teddy, and Kamete. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light. You will compete for the top prize of the No Zone Spelling Champion. If you win, you will go home with one of these lovely dictionaries. Now, each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say, repeat, and the word will be repeated for you. Now, each word 
is worth one point. Are the rules clear? Yes. Sabia, you're up first. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Sibia, your 30 seconds start now. Weed. Weed. Chuck a nice start. Weed. W double E D. Export. E X P O R T. Balance. B A L A N C E. Package. P A C K A G E. Assist. A S I S T. <laughs> Fertile. F E I R T I L E. Manager. M A N A G E R. Industry. E I. Time is up. Well done. Well done. Teddy, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Teddy, your 30 seconds start now. Good. G O G O O D. Profit. P R O F I T. Value. V A L U E. Process. P R O D C E W S. Account. A D O C a double C O U N T. Plow. P L O U G H. Measure. Time's up. Good. Please step back. Kamete, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Kamete, your 30 seconds start now. Seed. S double E D. Import. I I M P O R T. Safety. S A F E T Y. Factory. F A C T O R Y. Growth. G R O W T H. Product. P R O U D C T monetary M O N I T O R Y time is up. Good. After that excellent edition of Spell It, we'll go straight into the results. In third place, with a total of five points, we have Kamet. Let's give her a big round of applause. Good. Congratulations. Right. So today's No Zone Spelling Champion, having spelled a total of six words correctly each, we have Sibia and Teddy. Let's give them a big round of applause. Well done, step Please forward. Step forward. Good. Congratulations, Sibia. You are today's No Zone Champion. Congratulations, Teddy. You are also today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Please show everyone at home your dictionaries. Let's give them another round of applause, everyone. Good. Well done. Well, well done. done. Please step back. And as for you, Kamete, you don't go home empty-handed. I have a surprise for you. You get to take home this lovely dictionary. Congratulations to all of you, because you spelled very many words correctly. After that wonderful round of Spell It, I think we all deserve a break. So why don't we sit back, relax, and enjoy another exciting edition of African Tales. Everybody, I hope you're seated comfortably because I'm going to read you a very interesting story about why dogs have no horns. And don't forget to listen for this week's buzzwords. Long ago before we were, the world was a very peaceful, happy and healthy place to live. Because of this peace and good health, all animals loved each other and there never was any violence. Animals with horns never needed to use them to protect themselves since no animals ever attacked them. Because of this state of affairs, no animals ever damaged their homes from fighting and therefore none ever went for replacement horns from Monkey the Goods Manager at the Horns Manufacturing Factory. This worried Monkey very much. There were too many unclaimed horns in the safe storage. 
He, therefore, one day approached Lion the King and told him, Your Royal Highness, safety measures will need to be put in place to avoid any unhealthy effects from these many unclaimed horns, which will soon start rotting, and yet we don't have any storage facility. Who says they will rot? roared Lion. If these horns are interfered with your storage operation, and the animals that ordered for them don't need them, then export them to where they'll be needed. Lion was, however, disappointed to learn that these horns couldn't be exported. In the past, animals had placed orders for fancy horns that could not be packaged locally, so Monkey had had to import most of the horns and could not export them back. This confused Lion very much. Not sure how to proceed, he called for the company of his wisest advisors, Elephant, Crocodile and Hyena. Elephant was fast to speak. Your Royal Highness, if the animals that order the horns don't want them, have them distributed to the animals that would like to have horns. To which Hyena, who had said nothing at all during the discussion, quickly responded, My thoughts exactly. And Crocodile, who had slept through most of the meeting, quipped in addition, Yes, is thoughtful exactly. Elephant chose to ignore them as he listened to Lion's final words of wisdom. Pass the word around, monkey, roared Lion. All horns are being distributed free of charge to all animals without horns who want them. On hearing this news, Dog, who had always toyed with the idea of having horns, went into a frenzy excitement. He jumped up and down and passed by every homestead of hornless animals, he knew how to share the good news. Have you heard? Monkey's giving away all the horns in storage, free of charge, to all hornless animals that want them. All animals he talked to would stop what they were doing and join him and others in the march to the horns factory. Dog raced past all animals boasting about how he was sure to get the fanciest horns since he would be there before all of them. Sure enough, he arrived among the earliest animals and was in time to eavesdrop on elephant trying to convince Rhino to take some horns. Rhino, you are my best friend, trumpeted elephant. At least take two tasks like me. What will other animals think when they see you, my friend, without horns? But Rhino insisted he didn't want horns since he had never had horns and he wouldn't know how to maintain them. But Elephant insisted that he at least take one long one and one short one, which he reluctantly did. When they turned to serve Dog, they were surprised to find out that he had excitedly sprinted back down the line with a brilliant business idea. He advised all the animals that he had set up a new company to maintain the horns of all those who didn't know how to care for theirs. By the time he had finished with his marketing plan and arrived back at King Lion's palace, panting and sweating to claim his horns, there were no animals and the stores were closed. He rushed to Monkey, the goods manager, claiming that he hadn't yet got his horns. This greatly surprised Monkey, since all horns had already been distributed. It can't be. I've not taken mine, cried Dog. But there was nothing Monkey could do for him. He advised him to check with the other animals. Probably one of them picked his horns for him. With these words, Monkey closed his door and left Dog howling and crying. Since that day, the dog has never stopped howling and crying over his horns throughout the nights. The end. I really hope you've enjoyed this story. Please let me know if you did. Well, that's all we have time for today. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Now I know why dogs howl at night. Perhaps you're right, Ma. And it was a great story. Now, did you all enjoy the story? Yes! Did you enjoy helping us with the show this week? Yes! Brilliant! And it has been great having you on the show. That is right. But sadly, that's all that we have time for this week. Let's all say goodbye. Bye! Bye.